Paul, I'm really interested to know the reasons behind the purchase of this Dugard HD machine. I know and are familiar with the build of the machine. It's a very heavy duty machining centre, isn't it? But why did you purchase this? It was, uh, it was all works based. Uh, we had a lot of orders at the time for offshore, uh, the, the offshore oil industry and we really needed to up our capacity and with very little room what we were trying to do was get more work done on one machine. Uh, so we were looking for something with a bigger work envelope so we could do more machining in the Y and also with more power. This has got that hasn't it? This has got a very large working envelope for a machine of of this footprint in size. I mean, I note here from coming into the building, it must be quite hard to get machine tools yeah. in here, but it's got that up, down, y, upside down Y axis, which means that you're, you're able to get a bigger working envelope inside the machine, doesn't it? Yeah, that's right. We can, we can machine 860 in one go, but we can get something 1.2 meters wide in there as well as 1800 long. So you're talking about the y-axis, so you can get something 1.2 in, in the y-axis and then machine the 860 within that? Yes, yeah, so what it gives us the opportunity to do is get it in, spin it round, repro, and we're off again. We can get something uh, 1.2 metres machined. And are you doing plate work that sort of size? Yeah, we, we are working right to the extremities of the, uh, the envelope. Our customer knows what we can do, so he, he gets in touch, talks to us about it, and we try and keep it within that envelope. And did you struggle to find other options of machines that gave you that envelope within the footprint? Yeah, it, the footprint, like you said, it, some of the machines were nearly twice the size to get that sort of uh, machining envelope. And then the second thing would be the power of this machine, because the way it's constructed is it's, it's about 14 tonnes in weight, isn't it? You've got a very high power spindle, it's a BT50, it's fully box guideway construction, so this is about power on machining. What's your experience of that? Well, we're machining 55 mil diameter holes with a, with a U-drill at 0.1 per rev at 200 meters a minute, no pex, straight through, which is virtually double the speed, double the feed that we were doing before, and having no problem. The tips are lasting longer. We got through coolant on there, obviously. So we're, we're machining at sort of double the, double the feed that we were before. And you're getting better tool life because I suppose the machine is very rigid, so it's absorbing any of that machining process or that U-drilling process. Yeah, yeah the, the rigidity is fantastic. That, that translates into other aspects other than just the drilling. You know, when we're milling out big pockets, you, you can hardly hear it, it's, it's perfect. The sorts of work that you're doing then, it's plate work and you're doing, you're doing the U-drilling operations, you're milling pockets, what, are you, what sort of materials are there and what are the parts? Um, 90% of it is a low carbon steel, it's just a normal sort of um, mild steel. Um, occasionally we do some stainless on there but not particularly often. Uh, one, one of the big differences we've seen is in our thread milling, because we're thread milling our M42 holes which we used to eat tips on that because of the rigidity of the machine. I think we're getting probably double our tool life out of those. Wow, okay. So the, the BT50, is this the only BT50 machine you have on site? Yeah, that's right, everything has BT40. And was, was the BT50 a consideration because of the aspects that you're talking? Yeah, it, it, because, it, because it was sold to us on the rigidity and the power of the machine as well as the size of, of the envelope, it was a big consideration for what we were doing. The, the control you selected on this, because I know there are various options with the Dugards, you went for the Siemens, is that because you have Siemens control throughout the machine shop? Yeah, every, every, every machine we have in here is the Siemens control. And some of the work is repeat work, so we were basically transferring programs that we'd done before, modifying to up, up the speeds and feeds. Uh, we didn't want to really start from scratch with, uh, with another control system. And has this kind of upped your game? You were doing a lot of oil and gas work, weren't you, before, but has this enabled you to open up new markets? Yeah, as everybody knows, oil and gas isn't where it used to be. Uh, it was a big factor in buying the machine, but luckily, because of the bigger envelope that we've got, some of our uh, customers that are more into automotive movement of, say, uh, engine blocks and stuff like that, are using us now for their turntables and things like that. So we picked up more work that we weren't necessarily geared up to do. And when, when you look at this and all the machines you've got in the environment here, where, where do you sort of pigeonhole this machine when you're looking at it? How, how would you summarize what this, what this is for Jenkins Engineering, this new machine? It gives us another fiddle to our bow. 
you know, we can sell ourselves on being able to do a different type of work rather than what we do. We do a lot of aluminium, we do do a lot of steel, a lot of stainless, but this, the size aspect and the rigidity of it. And, it, and it's got the through spindle coolant on it, which helps you for your machining when you're doing when you're doing your U-drilling and your, and your pocketing. Yeah, I, I, I don't think we would buy it without the through coolant. You know, it's, it's a necessity when you're drilling deep holes like that. Have, have you got a swarf conveyor? Yes, we've got a swarf conveyor, and we generate a lot of swarf as well. Yeah.